Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're well. I'm on with my first project for July for Auntie Vera Scrap and Craft. The theme this month is Get Out of the House. So, um, you would have seen in my unboxing that I bought this Dilusions Dialogue insert booklet. So usually these are placed into a cover and you can fit a few of them in the cover and then you can take them when you go traveling or even just at home and you've got all different ones together that you can journal in, art journal in, you know, whatever you'd like to do. Now there is a range of these and I picked this one up from Auntie Vera's and this is the um, lined one. So it has lines on the pages and the pages are really thick so that you can art journal and use whatever media you like in them. Now there are different booklets in that as well, but I grabbed this one because I wanted to see what it was like. And then I thought it'd be really good because I have stacks and stacks of exercise books, art diaries all sorts of things that i have been like picked up from the second hand shop or been left with when my daughter moved out and left me all of her art and craft stuff so i thought it'd be really good to use some of the papers that i already have here and try and make some of my own insert books now they won't have the thickness of the paper in these um, the art book ones might but otherwise, I'm sort of more interested in making a set that I can use for um, my expenses when I'm out and about shopping. I can note them down and um, journaling and that sort of thing. So they don't all necessarily need to be nice and thick for me. I can still decorate them. I just wouldn't be able to use, um, you know, acrylic paint and that in the thinner ones. So I thought it'd be really good to mix the wonderful papers that we got in our kit, which are from Photo Play, and they are the, can't remember what it was called now, like Living the Quarantine Life papers they are. And they're hilarious and awesome. So this is my favorite because it's called Covidiot. So I thought it'd be really good to use these as the outer covers and then use some of the papers I've got around here to fill them up. So that's the plan for today. So now I just have to choose the papers I wanna do and what insets I'd like to do. So the first inset that I'd like to work on is one for my expenses. So I've got this graph pad it was, and I've taken some pages out. Now it is thin, but that's all right because the idea is not necessarily to embellish this much. It's just to use it to write all my expenses in while I'm out and about. So I've ripped 12 pages of that out because I counted the amount of pages in here and there's 12 that have been folded. So I thought I'd do about the same amount. Now it will be thinner, which is probably a good thing for me. So it won't be quite as bulky. So the next thing I wanna do is pick a paper that I'd like to use for the cover. I'm thinking of this one, it is expenses. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one's got cutter parts on it as well. So I must remember to keep one of them for my cutter parts. So I think we will use this one for the cover. Just put them to the side. So the first thing I have to do is cut down my pages and cut down my papers. So I've done some rough measuring of the other book that I bought. I thought I'd use that sort of as a template to see what sort of size to make things. So the pages turn out to be eight and three eighths of an inch um, across and then you fold them and up and down they're eight and two eighths inches so i'm going to cut down these papers they're pretty well they're pretty well right up and down perfect i will have to put up with these holes down the bottom i don't mind that i like to reuse stuff so i'd rather reuse that to then buy something that looks perfect it's a little crinkly too because it's yeah been through the wars wars at my place but that doesn't bother me either so and then we've got to make it the eight and three eighths across which is easy to do so i'm going to chop them down i'll probably use my guillotine 
and I'm going to chop down this paper to match and then I'll be back to put it together. One of the inserts I want to make is a bullet journal insert. Now I have this bullet journal that I bought a couple of years ago and I haven't used. I think I did one page in it and that was it. So I thought it would be great to use some of the papers in that to make myself an insert that's got the dots like a bullet journal. The only problem is, is the pages aren't big enough for me to fold over. So that means I have to uh, join two pieces together to make a page. To fold, there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, the way I am going to do it is I have one page here that I have folded so that it's the length I need for one half of the page there. And then I've folded it to make a hinge to join the other side of the page too. So when I sew the pages together, I'll be sewing through the join here. So what I've done is just run some double-sided tape along this part where the fold is. Um, obviously, you don't want to put it on the actual fold because we'll be sewing through there, but that's what we're going to adhere our other page to. Now, um, just to help it all stick together nicely too, I'm going to use some double-sided tape. Now, I've just got some paper here to put underneath while I do this. Now I'm also going to use the lines that I can see on my mat to line the pages up so that I get them straight. So I would put this edge up against a line and then when I put this page in I will make sure that that goes up against the line here too so that the top of our pages is going to be straight and hopefully the bottoms. They're not cut straight, that's for sure, but it won't matter so much because we've got our hinge there. So, all right, so let's do that. And then I'll get on with doing the other. I've got 12, I think, to do. So I'll just do one on camera to show you. So now I've got our pages joined together and there's our hinge. So, I mean, it's not perfect because, you know, you've got this sort of hinge there and that, but I don't mind that for what I want to do with it. Um, I thought I'd do a bullet journal insert um, to make lists that I can take places with myself, especially lists of the craft gear that I have and that I need and that sort of thing. So, so now I'll just do the other 12 and then we can put them together. So here are my four insert books that I decided to make. So I still need to bind in the signature, the pages. So the first one, I made the pages with this pad that I showed you, which is grid paper. And then I made this one with pages from an old art diary. My daughter left a whole heap of these here when she moved out and I haven't been using them much for anything else. So it's a great way to use those up. And then I did this one with my bullet journal pages and I showed you how I joined them together and hinged them together. You can see the hinge there. And then the last one I did was with the lined papers. It does have a couple of blank papers. Every two pages, there's a blank page. Um, I used an old exercise book. I have heaps of old exercise books that just sit around doing nothing. So it was really good to be able to grab that out and reuse the pages. So that's what I'm using in there. So some of the pages aren't 100% even and some hang out like that. I'll trim them down once I've got the signatures in. And then I'll know exactly how much I need to take off. So they're looking pretty good and size wise, they're pretty spot on. And because I've used um, a lot of thinner papers, they're not quite as bulky either as this insert, not as heavy. So I think that's gonna be great. 
So the next thing to do is to get them sewn in. So I'm going to do a five hole pamphlet stitch and I'm using, it's a tattered, tatting thread here, which I find quite strong and good. So I've already taken about three lengths, three times the length of the books that we're making to make sure that we've got plenty there. And I also have some cardboard here so I can poke some holes and not destroy anything. And I've got my awl to make the holes. So we'll grab our first signature and I'll do one with you. And then I will go off and do the others. I think I'll do this one. So this is our little grid one. That graph paper in there. So you've got to make sure that you press the signatures in nicely, that they're not sticking out the top or bottom or edges, but as I said, we can trim them off if they do stick out a bit afterwards. Just want to make sure that the pages are sort of even like that. I like to grab a ruler and put it down the middle and just press down to make sure they're pressed down as far as they can be. And then I'll grab my big clips and put one on this side. So it's the same process as what I do to sew my signatures into my junk journals. Now you could do a template with your holes if you want them evenly distributed uh, through all the books and that, but I'm going to be lazy tonight and I'm just gonna go for it since it's just one little signature. I'm just gonna guess, eyeball it and um, punch them where I think they should go. So we want one around about the middle. So I might put it on the line there. Just go through, that should be enough. Yep. And then I'll do one about a centimetre from the top and bottom. One there. And then one about here. And we need another two, so we'll do about halfway between those two. And then again, about halfway between those. That will do there, I think. So we're gonna sew straight through the cover. So now that's the bottom and that's the top I want. Good. All right, now I'm going to leave the end of our cotton, just make sure I don't have any knots, out um, in the book here. So I just think if I have all the ends dangling around here that they might get caught in the future on things. So I'm going to finish it off and tie it off on the inside of the book. So we'll go through from the inside and we'll leave a nice long tail. And we go up one and back three and then down th through this top one. Now if you're finding it hard to get it through sometimes it helps just to close the pages together a bit. Now we're going to go back up through this one. Now we're going to skip the middle hole and go down to this one. And then down through this one. Now you can change the way you do this depending on where you want to tie it off. Some people like tying off down the bottom, some people like tying off up the top, but I usually do the middle. We go back through here. And then we go back through the middle. Now we want 
the tail piece over one side of this thread and we want the end, other end under and through the other side. So I've got way too much cotton there, but that's all right, rather more than not enough. And this is when you can tighten your threads. Now it's always good to have a look and make sure they're tightening up here. So it's a bit of leeway there. Let's see if we can tighten that up. Yep, that tighten that up nicely. And it's good also just to check if we take these off and check and make sure that there's no like knots or anything if you need to but ours is looking pretty good so it's just a case of making sure that these are all taut like your guitar strings and then you just tie it off so I like the five hole pamphlet stitch for this type of booklet because it's a lot stronger and sturdier than the three whole pamphlet stitch so and then you can just cut them as short as you like I don't mind a bit of a dangle like that it sits in there nicely and then you can always put some paper or some washi tape over the spine if you don't like the holes I might end up doing some washi tape after we'll see so. So that's our first little booklet. So I've just got to do that again with the other three and then they'll be ready to decorate. And as I said, once you've got to this stage, if you've got bits hanging out anywhere, you can trim them off with your um, ruler. And that's what I like to use, a ruler and a knife like this, a hobby knife thing. I was using the guillotine to cut some of the pages, but it was not cutting them really well because they're so thin and that it was bending some of them so I went to using the knife and the ruler and that was a lot easier to do the multiple pages all at once so I'll be back once I've finished off the rest of the books so this is the ephemera pack that I got with my papers from Auntie Vera for the month of July and so I've been pulling bits of that out to decorate my little inserts that I made and I also um, used the cutter parts. Now most of these came from the uh, Covidiot, my favourite paper, the Covidiot paper. <laughs> Can't say it without laughing. Um, I did get one or two from this one which is This Happened. So I used those and I also used my Distress Oxide Spiced Marmalade that I grabbed from Arnie Vera as well to decorate my little books while I was sitting down watching TV last night. So I will show you how they have turned out. I had so much fun. So there's that one. Now, one of the cutter parts was this one and I was able to cut it apart into four different pieces to make little labels to go on the front so that I can label them so I don't get confused as to what they're meant to be for. <laughs> so I just love all these little like COVIDs <laughs> that I put everywhere. So, um, so that is my bullet journal one. I could have rounded the corners. It does look nice with rounded corners, but if I rounded the um, cover corners, you'd see the papers and I couldn't be bothered rounding all the corners on the papers, but that would look nice, so. So that's that one. And that's the one where I um, hinged the papers together. Now it doesn't look too bad there. So, so that's a nice little bullet journal for me to create some lists in. And that's quite thick paper too, so I can decorate that a little. And then I've got this one. Again, another little COVID. This is what day is it alone together. So, and I used some of the papers in some places just to back some of the ephemera so it stands out more. So this is my writing one that I made with an old exercise book. It's that old that it's starting to go yellow around the edges. But it's a great way to use up if you've got stacks of old papers and that that you're not using. 
Um, and I have a lot of offcuts from doing this and they won't get wasted either. They'll get tea dyed and put into my junk journals so it'll all get used. So there's still room if I want to decorate the inside of the covers. And we've got this one. I love that tartan. I think that one was called Played. So, there's the label again that I cut out from the one cut apart. So that's my little um, art journal one with the art diary papers. It's got the little um, perforations there where the holes were, but I actually quite like the look of that, so I left them in. I could have cut them off, but I like them. And to get the right sort of size, I had to leave them on. But that doesn't bother me, so. And that's the inside where we've sewed it together, so that's nice and neat as well. This has a round, it naturally had rounded corners in the book, so I've just left them, so it's a bit odd, because it's got half with rounded corners and half with not, without, but it doesn't bother me. So, and then this is the last one that I made. Love the ephemera and the papers, they all go really nicely together and I love the spice marmalade. Just made it look a bit old and yucky, <laughs> which is what I wanted, so. <laughs> but the colour goes well, because there's a lot of orange in the um, ephemera and the papers as well. And so that's my graph pad one. Now the graph pad that I had was a bit wrinkled because it's been hanging around here for years, but that doesn't matter. This is going to be probably for my expenses and that. When I'm out and about, I can slip this in my handbag and just write down my expenses and hang on to my receipts and that, which will be very handy for me. So that's the way they have turned out and I'm really, really happy with them. I'm glad I gave it a go. As I said, it's such a great way of making your own little inserts um, using some lovely papers and that works out nice and cheap and uh, just reusing papers that you might have around home. Um, I'm definitely going to use this as well, but the papers in this are so thick that it's best to use, I think, for some sort of um, art journaling and that, which I haven't done much of. So with these ones, I sort of don't mind if I mess them up a bit and they're, most of these will just be for writing notes and that anyway. So that means I can keep the really good ones for doing art journaling and that. So I'll probably will get some more of these and there's even a few more that I'd like to make um, as well. So I think it's a yeah great thing to give a go. So hopefully I've inspired you to try and make your own little TN inserts like this to get yourselves more organised when you get out of the house. So... Um, Go and check out what the other ladies are doing this month on the Auntie Vera team. I'm sure they've got some awesome um, creative things that they have made as well using these papers. And I can't wait to see what products they've got to go with them. So it's going to be heaps of fun. Um, yeah, and take care and have fun. See you later, guys.